Hello guys and welcome back to the CCNA video series brought to you by ABY Design and Tech. In this video we're going to focus on the subnetting process. Now subnetting to a lot of people is something which is mystical. It mystifies them, they don't understand it. However, if you follow this process I lay out in this video and you go through the examples, you will actually realise that subnetting is damn easy. My goal is to turn you into a subnetting expert. So let's dive straight in. The learning objectives for this video will be to understand the process of subnetting and to learn the considerations for a subnet design. So before we dive in, before we go through any set example, let's outline this process. Starting from beginning to end, we start with a single class A, B or C network and then we convert the IP address and subnet mask into binary. We then work out how many subnets we need and how many hosts per subnet we need. We then steal. We're going to steal those host bits and convert them into ones to create subnets. We're going to find our increment, which tells us what our next subnet ID is. Subnet ID, that is just an IP address to represent the, the subnet. And then we convert the IP address and subnet mask back into decimal. And spoiler alert, we are going to have a new subnet mask once we reach that second to last step. And then the last step, list out all of our subnets. So enough of me going on about this process. Let's see this process in action. So the first step, start off with a single class A, B or C network. In this example, I've got class B network 172.16.00 slash 16. By default, that's got a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. .255 .0 .0. By default, with a class B network, the first two octets, they represent my network. They represent my group. All devices in my enterprise, they have to begin with 172.16. Now the last two octets, they represent my host part of my IP address, who I am within that group. And those can be any value. However, no two devices in the same network can have the same host part for their IP address. It has to be unique. So just as a recap, the first two octets, they represent my group. The last two octets with a class B network, they represent who I am within that group. Next, we need to think about our requirements. So how many subnets do I need? How many hosts per subnet have I got? Now, Abda, how do I find out how many subnets I need? Well, it's this simple. Look at how many VLANs you've got. Look at your WAN links, your point-to-point -point links. You will need a subnet for every single LAN segment that you have. How many hosts per subnet do I need? Well, just do this. Take your largest subnet and account for that. So as an example, I need 500 subnets. I've got a pretty large network. And my largest subnet is going to need 100 hosts. So those are my re requirements. 500 subnets with 100 hosts per subnet. Now, what math is involved at this stage? So we need to come up with how many subnet bits we need and how many host bits we need. You see the process of subnetting, we take away host bits to make the subnet mask larger. So therefore, more bits of the subnet mask are ones, which means that more bits of the IP address represent our group. So I need to go up in increments of power of two to find out how many subnet bits I need and how many host bits I need to meet these requirements. So let's do this together. So, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, 2 to the power of 6 is 64, 2 to the power of 7 is 128, 2 to the power of 8 is 256, and 2 to the power of 9 is 512. So, listing out powers of 2. 2 to the power of 9, that gives me 512. 512 encompasses 500, which means I need at least 9 subnet bits in order to meet my requirements of 500 subnets. Now let's move over to the host per subnet. I need 100. So 2 to the power of 7 gives me 128. 128 minus 2 is 126. So with 7 host bits, I get 126 usable IP addresses, so that meets my requirements for host per subnet. Now, Abda, why do we do 2 to the power of n minus 2? The reason being, because for every subnet, there's two IP addresses we cannot assign to hosts. Those are the subnet address and the broadcast address. Those are, those are two IP addresses for every subnet that we cannot assign to hosts. So, moving on, we need 2 to the power of 9 
subnet bits, which allows for 512 subnets, and we need seven host bits, because two to the power of seven minus the two gives us 126. Now, we've got our subnet bits, we've got our host bits, what do we do next? Okay, so now that we know our subnet bits, and now that we know our host bits, we now just borrow bits from the host part of the subnet mask. And we do this by taking those host bits, and we change them. We change them from zeros into ones. So now, this is what our subnet mask is going to look like. Before, before this transformation, this subnet mask was just 16 binary ones followed by 16 binary zeros. A pretty ordinary subnet mask. However, now, it's 16 binary ones followed by another 9 binary ones followed by 7 binary zeros. So now we break the IP address into three parts. We have the network part. This identifies our class 4 network. Every subnet will have the same first two octets. Every subnet will have the same network part. This never changes, by the way. Okay, this identifies the class 4 network that we belong to. Now, the next nine bits, they represent our subnet part. That can change. The subnet part now represents our group. So before, it was the network part that represented our group. Now it's the subnet part which represents our group. Now, the last seven bits, which are the host part, that represents the individual host within that group. So the last seven bits over here, individual host within that group. Now, it's important to note that in the subnet part, we can change the IP address. So over here, I've got these IP address bits in blue. We can change those. And the reason why we're going to change those is that they allow us to make our different subnets. I thought I would just point that out that with the network part, these two octets, the value of those octets does not change. The value of this octet and the value of this bit can change. So, now that we have our brand new, brand spiking new subnet mask, what do we do next? After what is the next step of the process? Well, we now need to list out all of our subnet IDs in order from first to last. So how do we do that? How do I know with this subnet mask what my next subnet ID is? It is as simple as this. We first need to find our increment. And we take the subnet mask octet with our last binary one exists and we input that binary number into the subnet chart. So as an example, if we look at my subnet mask down here, where is the last binary one? Well, the last binary one in the subnet mask is this last blue one over here, and that is in a fourth octet. So I input this entire binary number into my chart. So one, zero, 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 followed up by two more zeros. Now, wherever the last binary one exists, that is gonna be my increment. So as an example, the last binary one drops under the 128 column, my increment to find my next subnet ID is going to be 128 in the fourth IP address octet. So I increment by 128 to find my next subnet. And then, once we have found out all of this information, we simply just convert the IP address and subnet mask back into decimal. So as you can see, the IP address or the class for network, that stays the same, 172.1600, okay? Not much change there. However, there is a massive change with the subnet mask. That has now been changed to 255.255.255.128 or in prefix format, a slash 25. 25 binary ones followed by seven binary zeros. Next, what do we do? We've got our increment. We worked out how many subnet bits we need, how many host bits we need. Now let's go and list out all of our subnets. So beginning with the class 4 network. Our first subnet is going to be 172.16.0.0.25. So it's the class 4 network with our new slash 25 mask. Now, to find the next subnet ID, I increment by 128 in that fourth octet. So we add 128 to that fourth octet. Now, what does that give me, guys? What do you think that, that is going to give me? That gives me 172.16.0.128 slash 25. So that's my second subnet. Now, let's think about this logically. If I were to increment by 128 again in this fourth octet, that gives me 256. 256 is not a valid value in any subnet mask octet or in any IP address octet. It's not a valid value. Now, before we proceed, think about decimal. When we count in decimal, we start off from zero, we go to one, we go to two, etc. When we get to nine, 
what do we do? Well, we simply go to 10 after. That, that wasn't too hard to figure out. But essentially what we're doing, we're incrementing by one in the next column, and we're resetting the current column back to zero. And that's exactly what we do in this case. 128 added to this gives me 256. That's not a valid IP address number. So what do I do? I increment, I increment this column by one, and I reset this column or this octet back to zero. And so that means, what actually, before I continue, what do you think the next subnet ID is gonna be? Just guess, just guess. And if you guessed 172.16.1.0 25, you would be correct, because that is the next subnet ID. Now, you can see a theme that we're only changing the octets that have the subnet bits. The octets, the, the first two octets with the network bits, we're not changing those because those represent our network. Remember guys, the with subnetting, we're taking that large class A, B or C network and we're breaking it down. So we're still gonna have bits which don't change. Those are the network bits. The subnet bits, they can change, so we are gonna change them. Now, moving forward, the next subnet ID is 172.16.1.128.25. And then the next one after that is 172.16. 2.0.25. Now, I'm not going to list out every single subnet ID because it's 512 subnets. So I'm not going to waste my time on that. You've seen this example. You've seen how we work this out. Let's move on to the next step. Now that we have our subnet IDs, let's work out the range of usable IP addresses per subnet. So how do we do this after? How do we accomplish this with your process? Well, it's, it's as simple as this. We add one to the current subnet ID, and then we go two IP addresses less than the next subnet ID. So as an example, for this subnet over here, the range of usable IP addresses is 172.16.0.1 through to 172.16.0.126. 126 is two less, is two IP addresses less than the next subnet ID, which is 172.16.0.128. Now, you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, what about IP address 127? That is within the range, and that's one less than the next subnet ID. Why don't we list that? Well, 127, that is your broadcast IP address. It's not a usable host IP address. A usable host IP address is an IP address we can assign to a device. We cannot assign 127 to a device because it's our broadcast IP address. Now, following in this vein, let's list out the rest of of the IP address ranges. So the next one is going to be 172.16.0.129 through 172.16.0.254. Again, we got two IP addresses less. So as an example, the next subnet ID, 172.16.1.0, two IP addresses less. We would change this to a zero, go back two more, and that gives me 254. Now again, 255 of that is a valid IP address, but we can't use it to assign to host because it's our broadcast IP address. That's why we always have to go two IP addresses back. Now, carrying on with this method, 172.16.1.1 through 172.16.1.126 is our next IP address range. This is our next subnet range, and this is our next subnet range. So as you can see, pretty simple to list out the, the subnet ranges. Guys, that is it. That is the entire summiting process covered from beginning to end. And as you can see, it's not a very difficult process. You follow these steps, you do the practice questions that I've got next, you will become a summiting ninja in no time. If you have enjoyed this content and would like to see more content like this, then please subscribe to my channel and thank you very much for watching.